Uh, she's very, very pretty and sweet. She's got an amazing dress on. She is in a one-act play right now. It's in Pasadena. She's also doing some comedy in Chicago at the end of November. I'm trying to get all these credits out, so if I mess up her name, she's not mad at me. Give it up for the very funny Sita Shang. <laughs> That was great. You got it just right. That's that's amazing. It's it's a first for a white person. It's, it's great stuff. Um, so I used to get asked this question a lot uh, uh, when I lived in the Midwest, a little bit less out here. And that question was, where are you from? No, no, where are you really from? And like, I know what that question means. That means like, what are you doing here, you non-white, non-black person? And I used to get so offended by that question. I got so offended by that question that I forgot I was born in China, you guys. <laughs> yeah, and that just makes me more American than anyone here because I've forgotten where I come from and I'm incredibly politically sensitive to any type of criticism, you know? Uh, this is how Chinese I was, though. I got kicked out of the Young Communist Party when I was seven years old. <laughs> I was Chinese as fuck, you know? There's no real good comparison between the Young Communist Party in China to like something in America. It, it kind of be like, if uh, the Girl Scouts like didn't sell cookies, didn't take care of old people, and if the Girl Scouts were also communists. Yeah, that would be a great comparison. <laughs> um, but I live in L LA now. I really love living here. It's just living the dream. I mean, I mean, who doesn't love living in a Toyota Prius, right? It's amazing. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in my car, uh, just a lot of time. I was driving by this strip club on La Brea called Crazy Girls. Do you, have you guys ever seen this place, Crazy Girls? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, see, people here are not afraid to go into a strip club called Crazy Girls, but I don't think anyone would pay to go into a strip club called Crazy Women. <laughs> I just don't think people have like a crisp 20 ready to watch a woman drive her entire family into a lake, you know? Like, it's the, the floor show at Crazy Women. I don't know about Champagne Room could be a totally different thing. Uh, and when I landed in LA, I just lived in this really, really crappy neighborhood. And you know, in LA, you can tell how bad a neighborhood is by the number of toilets and mattresses that are on the sidewalk. It was kind of like living in a Hanna-Barbera cartoon if the background just repeats over and over again, like toilets, mattresses, toilets, mattresses. You'd walk a block and it would be like, toilet, mattress, jack in the box. Okay, maybe, maybe it'll change. Walk another block, toilet, mattress, human turd. Well, why isn't the human turd in the sidewalk toilet? That makes sense. Oh, oh it's because dreams don't come true in this neighborhood. That's why, Zita. Keep walking. Mattress, toilet, oh, that mattress is on fire. So that was like a foot away from where I slept. This mattress was completely burnt out. And I was like, I've got to get out of this neighborhood because first they come for the mattresses, then they come for the Asian female comics. You know, I know how gangs work in LA. I'm too deep in the streets, you know, like I just watched Straight Outta Compton. By the way, best thing uh, about Straight Outta Compton is that now I've successfully spanked it to two generations of ice cubes. <laughs> the only time he's been pluralized, ice cubes. Uh, but the thing about LA is that people love hiking here. And I just like hate people who talk about hiking because it's like every time they talk about it, it's like, oh, we're on this amazing adventure. And it's like, do you know what mountain people are? Do you know what hillbillies are? Do you know what hicks are? That's what they do all day long, but they don't wear a $500 North Face jacket to go between their meth lab and their distillery, right? Like hiking is not any better than walking, except that hiking is for rich people and walking is for poor people. That's the only difference. Uh, the thing I think I hate the most about hiking is that you just dramatically increase your chances of finding a body, you know? And that's just not chill, that's not chill. Like if you end up dating somebody who loves hiking, my best advice for you would be to take them hiking, murder them, and then you never had to go hiking again. That's like, that's the best thing, right? Yeah, we're an inactive group of people, comics, we are. Uh, I think it's just that I'm a little bit scared of nature, as we all should be, like, because we're, we're humans, and, you know, we're these weird, furless, clawless things. You know, we're basically like skin bags out there. We have nothing to protect ourselves with except technology, which doesn't even work out in the woods. I was reading the story, and it was, it was about this firefighter. He was out in the Santa Ana Mountains, just like by himself, two weeks, him and his dog, having like a man-dog camping trip or something. And one night, his dog decides to run away from camp. So this guy, he's like a real Bear Grylls type. He's like, I'm gonna save my dog. 
So into the dark he goes to save his dog. And when they found him, he had fallen off a cliff, broke his leg, and died of hypothermia. And his dog was completely fine. Because it's a dog, that's why. Dogs know what to do in nature, we really don't. Like, they found the dog in the parking lot a day later, just being like, oh, we're supposed to meet back here, right? Hmm? It just got me to think, I was like, oh my god, a firefighter dying on a camping trip to save his dog? That has got to be the whitest white person death I've ever heard in my life. Like, it just has to be. Like, when I was telling you that story, did you imagine any other race on that guy? Like, if I had said Filipino firefighter goes on camping trip, dies for a dog, you'd be like, mm, I feel like you're setting up a premise right now. Mm, it just doesn't feel true. Uh, and it's just like the love between a white person and their dog is some of the purest love in the world. You know, it's so powerful. There are like stone cold rapists out there who will cry at Marley and me. That's what I'm saying. Like, look at uh, Bernie Madoff, just one of the greatest perpetrators of white on white crime. Love dogs. Uh, or even Hitler, another great white on white crime perpetrator. He actually had a dog named Blondie. I mean, Hitler is so white that his dog has to be Aryan. Like, <laughs> so weird. So it was towards the end of his life. He was down in the bunker. He knew he had lost World War II and he was thinking about ways to kill himself. And he had these cyanide pills. He wanted to know if these cyanide pills would work. So he gave the cyanide pills to his dog, Blondie. She died. And he was so distraught that he immediately committed suicide. I mean, I was like, okay, so you killed like six million people, but your dog is the straw that broke the camel's back? I think that might be the whitest white person death in the world. <laughs> uh, I, I'm gonna get out of here on this last bit. Uh, I think women are pretty accepting, and since we're in a group of women, everyone agrees with me. And this is why. Uh, when we get pregnant, we're just okay with this rando, and I do mean rando because a fetus is just a random combination of DNA like kind of subletting our body for nine months and then just making the rudest exit possible, right? <laughs> like, like a fetus is the worst roommate. They never pay for food. They're always moving around, keeping you up. And then when they shoot out of you, you just say goodbye to your security deposit on your vagina, right? Because that shit is gone. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like the fetus is Will Smith and Bad Boys and your body is the explosion they're slowly walking away from. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. My name is Sita. Yeah, totally. Oh my God, I hear you. I've had enough men live rent free. That is an amazing dress. I want to wear it as a shirt. It's so cute. I love it. I absolutely adore it.